Hello, everyone, and welcome to Synth Talk. My name is Ed Diaz, and with me I have... Scott Berry. How Scott are you guys Berry. doing? You had to think about it. No, it's all good. Scott Berry. <laughs> so, so we wanted to just welcome everybody to this edition of Synth Talk. We hope everybody is doing great and has had a great week. So uh, first off, let me just welcome everybody that's watching on YouTube and also on Facebook. Please give us a shout out. Let us know what's going on. Go ahead and like, put all the likes and the loves and the cares and all the different things you can. And if you're on YouTube, make sure also to put a like and then also uh, go ahead and Follow us, uh, subscribe, and then also put on the notification bell so you know every time we come in uh, in here. So anyway, today we are going to be talking about sampling, sampling, sampling. Right, Scott? Sampling, 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 sampling. Yeah, uh, if I can speak, absolutely. We're going to go through a couple different ways of uh, doing it and different ways that you can use the, the sampler. Uh, whether if it's a sample pads or bringing them in directly because now we have multi-sampling and sampling available in the Phantom as a version 2.0. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, we're going to try and cover a lot of different parts of sampling. Definitely we're going to get into, we're going to get into multi-sampling. So just stick tight with us. Uh, let me give a quick shout out to some of the people I see there. I see Mark Tronics. I see Mr. Mr. Tummy. I see Mr. Men Tummy. X. I love that. Yeah, from, from Edinburgh, uh, Planet 56, Robin Spears from Canada, XP50 player, Christopher Fry from South Africa. I see our friend Enzo. I see Jonathan Charles. I see Patrick uh, Tim over uh, over there. And uh, here's some. I see uh, Jijip Powell. I see Johnny Ray Price. Cool. So a lot of, a lot nice. of friends out there. So uh, just want to go ahead and get in there. And we, we're going to go ahead and we have... Our producer, uh, Gabe Rodriguez, shout out to him for running the show in the background. And then also our our boss, uh, Dwayne, also going to be ma monitoring the chat. So just stick with us. We're hi, gonna Dwayne. Try and get, yeah, hi, Dwayne. <laughs> Hashtag hi, hi Dwayne. Dwayne. Make it happen, everybody. <laughs> so so anyway, uh, you guys go ahead and put in your questions and your comments, and we're going to try and get to all of those. I already see a question that comes up, and I'll go ahead and answer this one right away. And it's good. Uh, it says, what did it, what did it say? Da, 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 da. It said, can you hook up a turntable to the Phantom? And, and the short answer would be, yes, you could. You yeah. totally could. But we're going to get there. Okay, so I want you guys to stick with me uh, right now. I'm going to switch over and show you what document that I'll be using. Uh, we're going to be using in this. This is what I suggest you all get to it. So if you want to, you can go to Roland.com. Uh, just go to your normal, your Roland in your country. And if you just go into products, we'll go down to synthesizers right here and then of course we'll go into performance workstation right into this section and since we are talking about phantoms you can choose any of the phantoms available six seven or eight i'll choose seven right in the middle the middle child which i love and if we go down and we cursor to the bottom for those of you that that, that have not installed the phantom 2.0 update you can go ahead and go to downloads and this is where you will find the update right here and just so you know we've already uh, put a video on YouTube Roland product support that sh demonstrates and will walk you through that process but what I want you to do now if you haven't done it already you go to support and I would love for you to download the supplementary manual this is what we're gonna be doing today this is what we're gonna be following not verbatim but you know we're just gonna get you guys going in there right Scott that's yep that's that's what we how we learn. So let me go to the next one real quick. And here's what it looks like. The supplementary manual. This is going to get you guys and gals all going for the sampling. So this is what we'll be using. You know, I'll probably be calling out directly from this. So uh, this will lead you all into the promised land of sampling right in here. So this is what we'll be going. And uh, so when we have issues, this is what we're going to do on there. So. Yeah, today's all going to be about sampling today. It's just FYI. So uh, go back. All right, so cool. So let's go get started. Once again, thank you, everybody. Join in on YouTube and also on Facebook. Remember to send us the likes, send us the love, send us your questions, and also on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified. All right, cool. Uh, oh, somebody already said, uh, how bad of a person am I? I've already printed that out. And I have it spiral bound. Wow, that's awesome. That's well, awesome. It, it, it's like in today's technology, explain how you're doing that now with manuals, Ed. 
Oh, with manuals, I'll take an iPad, and you know, I don't have it plugged into the to here, but I'll download that PDF, put it in the iPad, and then I go ahead and write all my notes, everything that's going on, and then I'll send that document that I've already anointed. I think that's the right word. <laughs> anointed. <laughs> Kristen. More like christened. Christened? Oh, I think play like a, a, a 4-1 cadence and you're, it'll fit anyway so and then i'll send it to scott and then he'll kind of make his notes and we'll send it back and forth that way on different ones so that's something that uh i, I totally do spiral bound that's awesome that is totally awesome annotate right. uh, annotated i guess yeah well if i do it it's anointed so yes I guess. there you go uh, annotated but annotated yeah i mean yeah. with those applications the pdf you can highlight parts you can bring things up i mean having the ipad is is a huge Huge thing, with, especially with manuals. And the thing is, too, something to keep in mind. It's like, you know, when you buy a, a keyboard and you just get the one manual and you're like, wait a minute, there's there's a reference manual, there's a parameter guide, there's all this other stuff that's online. How come I didn't get that in my box? It's because it's constantly updated. And Absolutely. same thing with the manual. Um, in most keyboards, when new updates come up and things like that, they can easily just update it right there online and have a new version of it. And it's a little bit easier to keep it in a digital format than a paper format. So that's just something to keep in mind. Constantly check back, especially after updates, and look for the manuals or the supplementary manuals because they have a lot of information in them. Okay, cool. So, yeah, do do all that stuff that Dwayne is. Yeah, <laughs> Dwayne even commented, annotated. Yes. Fine, fine. Anointed. Anointed. <laughs> it was annotated and then anointed. So got to go back to college okay all right so let's go ahead and get started in this and kind of have some fun so first off i'll show the top of my phantom and my phantom and hopefully your phantom has been updated to 2.0 okay so in order to get to the screens and just so you can see we'll go ahead and press the sampling button right here that's what we're going to press right over here once we press the sampling button it's going to take us to the screen right here all right so these are our choices I had to grab the pin, the pin gets over <laughs> and here. the noise. This is and called the noise. age. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So this is where we need to ch decide on what we're going to do. Are we going to do like to a pad, to the keyboard, or to storage? Storage can be yeah. the the thumb drive that is in the back of your keyboard. So that's what the storage would be. So if you just want to do a sampling session and then maybe cut it up later, you can totally do it. Well, okay. Can, can I say something real quick? Absolutely. Uh, so one of the things that I think about before you're going to go into doing something with sampling, it, it's kind of like you need to have a little bit of a direction. Are you, you know, are you trying to solve a problem? In other words, you've got something that you need to create, recreate that you don't have enough fingers for, or is it just a sound that you can't get uh, that you want to bring in from something else? It's kind of like having the right direction of which way are we going to do this? What are we trying to do? Are we just trying to trigger something? Or are we trying to recreate something? Um, so having a good idea of exactly what the end result is, is a good way to start. Think of step 10 before you go into step one. Absolutely. So uh, a question just got brought up over here. Mr. Tummy, he says, are there plans via a firmware, firmware upgrade for the Jupyter XM to import samples via uh, computer or USB? Uh, I'm not sure on that. I'm, I'm not sure on that one, but you know that's one of the differences between maybe the Jupiter X and XMs versus a Phantom. Where right. a, a Jup well, what do you think, Scott? To me, a Jupiter is really it's focused on being a synthesizer because there's not a, there's not there's not a sequencer in there. Yeah. And a Phantom is a workstation, and a workstation being where it can do sequence and sampling. sampling that's, yeah. that's something that's been going on there. So I, I, I think that's definitely for sure. I mean, when I first saw the, the initial uh, ideas for the Jupiter and what the plan was, I just thought synth, nothing mm -hmm. else. I, did, I didn't think about or knew about the I arpeggiator, which I absolutely love, or yeah. drums even. I mean, I just thought synth, synth, synth. And that's kind of how I think, but it's, it's a lot more than that. So, but yeah, I, I would think more sampling would probably stick with the Phantom, but again, that's something we don't know. Uh, Roland is constantly moving forward with things and we just don't know where. 
sometimes it's going to go. <laughs> yeah. So personally, I, 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 my opinion is that you probably will not see sampling come to a Jupiter, but I could be totally wrong. But that's what mm -hmm. a phantom's job is for. That's what a phantom is, you know, sequencing and sampling. And I think workstations have been able to do that for about uh, 20, 20 years. Okay, let me, let me move my screen over so I can read the questions. All right, so another question. Uh, all right, uh, Man X6, I guess his name is, it says, there's a sweet spot for import volume. Yeah, there's a sweet spot for import volume for the converters when sampling. So is there a sweet spot? Uh, the normalized function tends to be super loud. Uh, what do you go ahead and get that one, Scott? Seems well, I, I mean, one one of the things is if you're going to bring something in that's already done, uh, 48 kilohertz is the sweet spot on the, on that side of it. Uh, I know that's the uh, the sample rate, but um, that's that seems to be the sweet spot. 48. I mean, you can still do 44 one uh, or higher, but 48 seems to be the sweet spot. Now, as far as volume goes, I would rather have the opportunity to pull it down than to have to constantly push it up. So um, I, I guess, yeah, it, it's hard to say exactly where the sweet spot is because it also depends on what you got going on in your scene, if you're, if you're doing something with the scene or triggering with it. But I, I don't know. I, I think some of it's preference because I may want to get something to kick out a little bit more and I may want something to stay under. Yeah. Um, well, it, 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 well look, look, step if, by step, uh, ch uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, if I if I can interject, so uh, as far as the sweet spot on the input volume, uh, once again, as Scott's saying, it depends what you're bringing into there, and then also you got to think of sampling as a type of recording, in my opinion, you got to think of it as a type of recording. So we have to really adjust the gain of what's going into the Phantom, because if you're coming in too hot, which means you can come in with too much volume, then it's going to overdrive the Phantom, you know, and, and just like any audio input device, and so Distort. you. Yep, distorted. Yeah. And and then once something it comes in distorted and it's recorded distorted, it's distorted. You can't polish it. Okay. It's just, you know. Mm. So if anything, find that sweet spot where you think it is, and you can tell on the Phantom, we're, we'll get into that. Uh you can see the levels, and then you get those levels right under where the distorts, real nice, healthy, fat uh uh uh, uh input signal and then you can do a little bit of normalization and that should just sweeten it up right there. But then don't forget don't forget also you can go in there and you can make adjustments after the sam sample. Uh, let's see. Also, I see that uh, our buddy in the background says it's going to be between negative 12 and negative 6 dV. And it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right in there. And, you know, zero. Once you get over zero, mm -hmm. you start, you know, you better watch it. So, yeah, negative 12 and negative 6. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is if you're bringing in a sample directly to the pad, whether if you wind up bringing it down to the keys or anything, um, you do have a level per pad. So that's also something to keep in mind if if it if you do still think it's too hot that you can bring it down later and if it's a waveform or sa multi sample at that point you can do it but yeah the, the the thing is getting it in to start with at the right right amount I guess is is where we're focused here okay so let's let's move on keep the questions coming keep the shout outs coming shout mm -hmm. out to our friends uh, Michael Kohler uh, over there our our friend over in the UK John Sweeney hope you're doing great everybody hey John doing great. Okay. Oh, another one. Okay. This is great. Uh, can you see that question, Scott? You go ahead. Yeah. And see X, that. XP, pl XP, XP 50, 50 player. player. Yeah. XP 50. Go ahead. What is the difference under multi sample for checking import to internal storage or not? Will it run off of external storage? Okay. So. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, but probably if you go ahead and check in uh, input to external storage, that will be that should be the storage here. Okay, right. so that's going to be that. That's uh, there. So uh, the reason I would do to uh, storage immediately, maybe I just want to do I have a sample session day. Okay, I want to go in here and just sample, 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 and then I can go in at a later time or later in the session and do my editing. So that's why I would use to storage right away in there right. so that's that's what i would do it uh and at this time i'm not sure if it'll run off will run it off external storage for uh, to my knowledge you have to load it you to get it to run it into in. the phantom yeah. you have to actually load that sample into the phantom i i would think that's what the internal storage is more or less doing i haven't played with it yet so please pardon me but it would be kind of like just o offloading the the usb drive if you're doing that to get them kind of organized and then an easy place to go get yeah um 
That's that's how I look at it. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back into it. I love the questions. Keep it coming. And as we go uh, further, I know you're going to have more questions, especially when we start doing some multi-samples. So let's go ahead and cover some of the basics first. First off, oh, what screen do I have up? All right, so we have this screen right here to pad and to keyboard and to storage. So let's go ahead and just start pressing the buttons and see what happens, okay? Uh -oh. So, uh, yeah, let's just press buttons. <laughs> buttons are cool. That's how oh, you learn, right? That's how you learn, okay? Uh, let me see here. Oh, let me let me go ahead and cover this. Hold on real quick. Someone, Robin, Robin Spears. Spears, just asked, where can I get a Phantom T-shirt? Do you have a Phantom T-shirt, Scott? I do. Go, I go, always go, do. Go. It's one of my favorite shirts. I like the way it fits. Yeah, I don't have yeah. one. Sad tears. Sad. Okay, so uh, Rob, <laughs> Robin says, where can I get a Phantom T-shirt? Actually, mm -hmm. also a Jupiter X T-shirt, too. I can't find them out there on the web. And our angel from above says, register your Phantom between now and the end of the year. And to get a T-shirt. Right. So just make sure you go and register your Phantom now, and that will get you in the running. All right, so let's go on real quick. And uh, we're going to skip questions for a little bit. Let me get into this, and but keep those questions coming, and mm -hmm. our guy will go ahead and pull it up here for you. All right, so let's press some buttons and see what happens. Okay, so first off, for you guys that are just starting off, I got to this screen just by pressing the sampling. That's how I got to the screen. Now, if you don't have this, remember, you need to go into the system and make sure and update your Phantom to 2.0. It needs to be updated. If it isn't updated, you don't have this, okay? So back to this. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and press the sampling button, and this is how I get to this screen. So the Phantom's asking me, hey, what do we want to put here? What are you trying to do? Just as Scott said, uh, well, you know what? Let's start off with basic sampling. So I can sample to the pad, to the keyboard, or to storage. Once again, as we mentioned earlier, storage might be just a nice way to just throw samples there so I can edit, import them later. All right, so let's go ahead and do to a pad. So I hit to the pad, and it's saying a sample already exists. So there's already a sample in the pad. No problem. We can go ahead and say OK. All right, let that load up for a second. Now in here, you're going to see right away this is this is a good sc screen. Everybody needs to understand all of this right here. Okay, sampling standby screen. Okay, so first off, we need to determine sampling mode. Are we sampling the keyboard plus the input, so from the outside in? Are we sampling just the keyboard, which is cool, or are we sampling just the input? So, for example, if I am sampling uh, maybe to and this is going to the pads but this is all basically the same for m most most things right scott so mo for yep. most things so if i'm sampling like someone asked earlier right when we started if i was sampling oh, oh. a turntable that would be from the input here so the input so that's where we would do that if i was sampling maybe i did a, a certain patch or something like that from the key bed that's what it's going to do. And if I wanted to just go to a basic mix of maybe maybe the sample, something that I have recorded and mix with that, that's what I would do. It. All right, so let's go ahead and pretend we're doing the input. And, okay, so next thing we need to decide is are we going to go mono or stereo? So remember, if it's if it's mono, it's just going to be a one one channel, so we're left usually. If it's stereo, it's going to be left and right. So just keep that. In yeah, I, I would think you know most times you're going to probably just want uh, a mono if it if it's like you know a, an effect or something. But again, if it's a keyboard sound, you may want to go stereo. It is going to take up more memory, but again, preference, but something to consider before. Absolutely. So and then we can. This is what we need to do if we input setting. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, keep that up. So input setting right here, we can decide where are we getting our input from. So since we went ahead and we had, go back over here. Since we went back, uh, there we go, to the pad. Since we were in there, uh, we told it we're going to do it from the input. That's why that came up. So, so we said input. So that's from out. So input setting, that's where it's going to come in when we go to there and say, okay, this is the audio into the phantom. Where is it? Where is it coming from? Okay, so right here we can determine: Are we going to do it from the mic, or are we going to do a line? So if we're going to do in the line. That's if we're doing quarter inch. If we're doing mic, obviously it is an XLR. And then we, if we're doing mic, we need to determine: Do we need phantom powder? So, so if we're running some kind of microphone, we might need phantom power. So yeah. that's up to you to decide. Also, you can determine if you want to have any master effects 
on that when you're coming in. So just to which FYI. Is, which is great. I mean, if you want to add a reverb or if you want to do some, some other type of special effects just to, to sample it in that you don't have wherever it's coming from, especially because you're connected, it's just awesome that it, it's sitting there. So something to, again, consider. Yep. More options. Okay, so I'm going to do a basic sample in just a second. Uh, and I just grabbed, you know, just a basic common mic. Uh, this is a dynamic mic, so I shouldn't need phantom power, right? So, uh, and I'm not going to put a master effects because if I record with a master effects, it's it's printed to that audio. I can't, I can't do anything with it. It was recorded with that. So I'm going to not have a master effects on. I'll go ahead and just turn it off just to make sure. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll turn off any kind of reverb, but I think we're good, Scott. So... Let's do audio in and test, test, test. So I'm speaking right now into, oops, let me get rid of this. Yeah, through the Phantom, I can hear both. That was kind of a trip. <laughs> so so <laughs> here's my mic and here's this mic, just so you guys can see. So let's go here and, all right, oops, ah, you don't need to see me. Okay, so just know I'm doing it and it's gonna probably sound a little bit trippy on your side, but you can see there is my volume right there. Test, test, one, two, test, test, one, two. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and go back. So I, I got pretty much set to go. So I am going to go back to here and look right there. Test, test, one, two. And if I need to, I can go into the back of the Phantom. There is a little knob there, and I can go ahead and turn it up. Test, 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 one, two. Or turn it down. Test, test, test. And I can make me get some uh, differences right there. So... Here's all we got to do is now we need to determine if we want to just go ahead and press start or do we want to do auto trigger. I personally like auto trigger uh, on most things. So in this example, explain might, what. Yeah, explain yeah. what auto trigger. So is. auto trigger the phantom. If I, if I have auto trigger on, it is waiting for a signal. It's waiting for something to come on. So once uh, once once you break a certain amount of threshold like a yep. compressor works then it will start to record so it will if there's nothing going on it doesn't record and then auto trigger as soon as you break that threshold it starts to record absolutely so. It's, so, it's a cool feature. So it's set for five. That's And that's usually, I usually don't mess with this too much unless I'm sampling something that's quiet. But even if I was sampling something that was quiet, I'd, I'd probably just leave it at five and just kind of see. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. Uh, here's the interesting thing. If I wanted to, since I'm doing from the input, I could put a click on. So if I'm trying to like play a, a, an instrument or rap to a particular thing or and there's a tempo, I could go ahead and have click in my ears and I could have... Uh, record this. All right, just as a FYI. All right, let's see what go goes on. I want to be quiet for one second. I'm going to hit auto trigger, and then we're going to go, like, boom. You know, just kind of have some fun. Just something boom. basic. Like if we're doing a bass drum. Boom, boom. All right, here we go. I'll be quiet for a second. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Here we go. Boom. Okay, that's all I needed for that sample. Yay. The Ed uh, boom. The boom. Make it just, okay, I'll put that mic down. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and start editing. This is where we're going to start uh, kind of having some fun. So as you see, since I did auto trigger, it's got right in there. All right, let's go ahead and start looking at some of these. So I can adjust my start points. So that's cool. I can adjust my end points where it ends. Okay, and that's where it ends where I press stop. I can adjust my hor horizontal zoom if I want to. I'll leave it right there. My vertical zoom. Okay, and this is an amplitude. This is just vertical zoom so I can see. Okay, okay, and then the overall level of that particular sample. All right, so I have that there. Uh, let's press preview. Boom, boom, boom. You hear it, Scott? Can you yeah, hear it? I hear it coming boom. in the right, the right boom. only, right side. Oh, okay, probably because I, I should have. Let's do it again. Let's do it one more time. I, what did I do wrong, everybody? Does everybody know? Stereo versus mono. I did stereo versus mono. Oh, all right, so cool. So let's do it again, because this wasn't a stereo sample. This was a mono. So let's do mono. Mono okay. e mano. Mono a mano. All right, great. So now you can see it's it's on both channels, left and right. Let's try it one more time. Audio trigger. Okay, quiet on the set. Boom. And stop. Okay, great. All right, so there, that should be a lot better. I'm going to adjust my start point right here. Preview. Boom. Now you Boom. should hear it in both ears. Yeah. 
Okay, so now let's go one step further and let's go sample utility. Now, I like this part. I usually come here a couple of times. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, the normalize. And I think we were kind of already talking about yeah. this. Mm -hmm. So I'll just hit normalize and yes. And so that's going to make sure no matter how I recorded it, it brings it to a nice full level. So, okay. Great. All right, so now... Let me go ahead and adjust this vertical zoom. Whoops, I mean the the vertical zoom, wrong button. Okay, so now we have a healthy level. Let me watch, I'm gonna ride my my uh, volume knob over here just to make sure I'm not, blow, blow your ears out. Boom, boom, wow. boom. They're, they're loud. Okay, so I turned it down. Boom. But don't forget, if I want to, I could bring down that overall level. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna turn my master volume back up to, uh, to the high level it was, and I'm gonna slowly bring up the level for that sample. Boom, 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 boom. So that's what I can do also. So you saw I went into sample utility. I went to normalization to make sure I have a nice uh, nice full sample to work with. But then I was able to go in and adjust the level of that sample. All right. So now let's go in a little bit further. As you can see, the start of my sample, there is some, there is some uh, stuff there. There's some Dead unused. Air. Yeah. So let's go ahead and zoom right in, and this is where the zoom really comes in. So my start point and my end point, and I can get, look how far, we can get really in there if we wanna get super, super, super precise, right around there. There's where we got that. And look, let's look at the end point. End point, and let me go ahead and adjust that horizontal. There we go, we have all, this is all, to me, this is all waste. This and, is just, and I, Yeah, this is and I think you it. can also hold shift and use the end point or the start point, and it moves a little bit quicker. Yeah, and so that's up to you. Let's go ahead and try that. Because remember, shift. Yeah, and so we can move a little bit quicker. So yeah, maybe get down there. And then once we get down there, we can go ahead and use that horizontal zoom and adjust. Now, I, on this particular example, I don't want to maybe go you know too deep in because I want it to naturally kind of fade. So let's give it a quick listen. See what we have? Boom. Cool. Boom. You Sounds can hear how, how it decays real nice and natural. Boom. That's great. Now, what do we do with all that other waste? Uh, I call this the, the fat of the sample. Let's get it, get rid of it. So I'll go to sample utility, and I'll go to truncate. This will go ahead and trim the sample, the unused portions of the sample. So great, and truncate. And so now we have a nice clean sample. Boom, 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 boom. And if we take a look, the sample is in my pad. Did I not have it? See. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, there it is, triggered right there. So yeah, probably... you, you have to be out of the sample oh, set sample up for edit. it to trigger. Yeah. Okay, before we do that, I have some other things I can do. I can have it gate. So boom. I will go ahead and I can have it loop, and I can have an effect switch if I have an effect on there. Yeah, so basically what the gate is, and I, th I think some people get confused, cause especially if it's a longer sample and they don't want to hold that pad down while they're doing it, and you just want to hit it or trigger it. Same thing will come to effect if you bring it down to the keys. You can just hit the key or hold the key down. That's what the gate does. If the gate's on, I think it just stops the second you let go. If it's off, it just plays the entire sample after one hit. So it's getting ready to go over here. Great, thank you, Scott. And then let's go to one more time, sample utility. And uh, there it is, we gotta name it. It's Because right now, all it says is new sample. So sample utility, rename. What do you so think we should call it? <laughs> <laughs> just just i'm gonna call it boom boom, just boom. <laughs> and then i'm gonna call it probably shift bass drum because you know yeah so so that way because that's probably what i would use it for so all right i think we're good survey says look good scott okay let's mm -hmm. go ahead and press exit all right so if you look on the screen here it says boom bd boom 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 that quick that's it that's it that's it right there now if i wanted to if i realized yeah i see people commenting boom boom yeah <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the neighbors are like what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing all right so what if we wanted to come in here and like i realized like ah uh, i don't like what i did I, I messed something up two options i can go back to wave edit back to where we were or if i wanted to go to a quick edit now I can come into this one like Scott was saying. I can say, oh, I, I, I want that gate on. 
I can go ahead and kind of adjust all that stuff if I wanted to. So and and these things automatically save. Yeah. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm done, I want to make sure I've saved it, it, it automatically saves and and goes with the last setting or adjustment that you changed it to. Yep. Yep. And so we can go back in there. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's answer some questions in there. All right. All right. Let's see where we are. Yeah. We're backing up on the questions, and I think uh, okay. Good. Backing up on the question. Where are we here? Here, 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 here. This is this is a good one. Uh, XV XP fifty player asked a question, and then it was answered by Joshua. the The thing is, this is again what's so awesome with the communities that are, are showing up on Facebook, especially, is how knowledgeable all of you guys have become, and how the community comes to the others for the rescue. But Ed, if you could read that out, I, I, I you know, it looks read like it, it was read really it to good. me because I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying. Which one yeah, I'm trying to see too. Oh, oh, wait, <laughs> that's a problem. No, I can, I can see it. I was just trying to find where it is. Uh, let's see, is XP, it the one? Yeah, it, it says internal storage. Okay, uh, he's XP50 player says the internal storage, the visible file directory, or another hidden location. Uh, it's I don't quite understand, but Joshua says because anything in internal storage can be used to create new multi samples, the keyboard multi sample memory is like the patch. The internal storage uh, is like the generic hard drive. Yeah. So, oh, okay. I see what he's saying. So, I mm -hmm. guess XP50 player is trying to decide where do I put the samples? Where do I right. put the samples? Yeah. Because if you look at it like this as, as what they'll become, if they're set up for multi samplers, they're waveforms. So even mm -hmm. though most of us may think, hey, I'm going to create this bell string sound or whatever I'm doing, and I want to sample my wind chimes outside and my violin that's in the closet, um, it doesn't have to be just for that. Those can actually go in as waveforms into the storage. So now when you're searching for waveforms from creating or sound designing from scratch, these will still show up. Yeah. So this is so... so Personally, I like to, I, w I go to the external storage just because I'm I, I would I'll have just a sample session. But mm -hmm. if I'm doing something like I come in, I'm like okay, let me make a human uh, kind of drum set, then I'll do it this way. That's that's all good. So let's go on. Uh, let's see any other questions real quick before we go on to the next section. And I hope this is helping you. I hope you yeah. guys and gals try this with the pads and see how fast and easy that was. You know, and, and we're explaining a little bit more, but it's not it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to show something when we're done here for oh, right now. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Uh, what's the max sample time? Oh, um, no, no, it's, no. Yeah, it's big, and I don't remember it's, it's what it big. is offhand. No, because I was trampling a song the other day, and I think, I think it was two minutes. I can't remember. I think, yeah. It, uh, something like that, you know. Well, here's the thing. If you're Let's using the pads, out. if you're using the pads to do something, you you could have uh, backing tracks, let's say, for instance. So they can be full songs per pad. So you have a lot of time there. As far as the multi-sampling goes or bringing it in that way, I think it is different. Um, I don't remember exactly what the time is, but it's pretty big. It was pretty big. I swear it was it yeah. was about two minutes, but that could be something that we can. Uh, uh, you, you guys go ahead and do that. Yeah. Just go ahead and do have the phantom sample the sequencer and see when it cuts off. You know, and I think it was about two minutes. I believe but but like i said it it it, it just it just depends it might have been more if i would have gone to the external versus the internal so right. uh we can always see but i but it, we could just see uh here's a good question uh let's see blah 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 let's see uh lay asks what sample formats was will this keyboard load on that one and i believe it's waveform 16 bit but let me go ahead and confer what do you think scott Will i think i, you, I think the, the crucial thing or the sweet spot is the 48 kilohertz um mm -hmm. with it as far as i know i think it will read any anything pretty much i mean well, no, well, we it's in the careful. manual yeah it's well in we the gotta manual. be careful i'll find it too and let's look in the manual everybody uh i'll be careful because i know i've gotten questions about the akai formatted ones do you know that mm -hmm. akai had their own special special ones but uh Dwayne but, for the save. Two minutes, 44 seconds, max sampling time. Yep, and then Dwayne also for the save. He says wave file. Wave file, which, yeah. But I wanted to make sure 
because I had somebody ask me if it if it loaded up old uh, or, or Akai samples, you know, in different ones and stuff like that. So uh, WAV file, I think it's 16-bit. Yeah, you know. not currently. That Well, the, the Akai samples and the sample libraries and things had a specific file format yeah. to there them. Was, there was, yeah. It was just an Akai format. Mm -hmm. But for all of you that work with samples, you could always take that Akai sample and then you could resample it as a WAV file and then load it to the Phantom. So right. so think of it this way. Uh, the Phantom doesn't load every type of, of sample format. And, and as some of my friends know, uh, if you're working with samples, you're all over the place. Uh, at, remember acidized waves and you have the Akai or the old Roland formats and stuff like that. If you can take that particular sample format and resample it to the format you want to use, then you're good. So yeah. uh, for me, for the Phantoms, they've always been 16-bit WAV files. And so that's where I'm just, that's where I'm at. Well, you know, it's like a lot of times, like for the sampling and things that I've done, I've always brought it into my DAW and make yeah. sure it's all clean and trimmed the way that I want, if it had any special effects on it. And then I export that out into either burn a CD or CD. connect that. Yeah, I do. I mean, that's that's how it was, right? That's CDs was. or tape deck or whatever you, you're tape using. Deck. Um, and then connect it in the keyboard and sample it in that Grandma, way. Grandma, so, what's this do? Yeah, I, I remember doing that with a, with a portable CD player, I think one time, and I think I used a tape deck another time for something. But um, that, you know, now you can put it into the thumb drive, and the thumb drive can import, and that's kind of where I was going to go next with this. Okay. Uh, to do the exact same thing you did, but bring it in as an import. Oh. Well, go ahead, go ahead and take okay. – uh, I and Dirk, I see your question. We're going to get to you. So Go ahead and answer it. Oh, okay. Well, well, okay. Dirk oh, asked. He says, "Hey, hey, guys, I'm struggling with importing drum samples and getting them to sound in sound in right when assigning them to different keys in a drum kit." And this is something I'm definitely going to go over because this is this is cool. Yeah, everybody, you can actually go ahead and make your own drum kit. You could take a drum kit in the Phantom, and, and uh, each drum instrument can have its own sample up to. Uh, you know, eight mono or four stereo samples. You can, you can, you know, with the different partials. So that is something that's real cool. He says, I'm struggling with importing drum samples and getting them to sound in right when assigning them to different keys in a drum kit. Uh, even if I leave all samples to C4 in the sample settings and choose root note 60 for every sound in the drum kit, they still sound a little bit lower or higher tuned to the original sample. Uh, you that's something that you're that's yeah, yeah. you you would have to set something like the original key or change it to um constant because when you bring in a sample and you're telling it hey it's c4 mm -hmm. that's where it thinks it is so it's automatically going to start to pitch uh whichever way you're going so it's either a con it's a constant setting i'm trying to remember what it is but you don't want it to be able to move pitch you want to be able to move that thing on any key that you want without it changing pitch yeah and i I'm not sure if we said that, but Dwayne uh, answered us. He said, it's 2 minutes, 44 seconds max on the sample time. 2 minutes, 44 seconds I, I answered that like a year ago. Oh, Are you been well, slick? I'm all over the place. <laughs> so I'm, I'm all kidding. Over. I'm kidding. You, know, you know me. Squirrel. I do. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. So, all right. So, let's get let's get back to uh You wanted to show something, Scott? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was having an issue with the, the thing. But basically, what, what I was going to show is I, I've put like a sample – already on a thumb drive right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to import it so let's see if we can do this and get a decent screen okay that's not bad um so if i went into menu or excuse me if i did the same thing if, if i held uh uh if i went sampling sorry i don't have to hold anything and then i decided hey i want to import so like what ed did earlier is he did sampling to pad i'm going to do import so let's just do this Perfect. screen right now so if i go import to pad and then I have to decide where the file's coming from. So ahead of time, I went ahead and formatted the USB drive, brought it into the computer, pulled the sound that I wanted, and I put it into the export file. But I also went ahead out of curiosity and I put it in the sound file just to see where it shows up. But once you've got the file, and you can see it's a WAV file, I can preview it. I haven't behaved. Right there, so that's good. And then I can import it or an auto import. If I go to import, then I have to pick uh, a pad. So we'll just go ahead and pick one. I've already put it in here, but we'll just do it. I again. haven't behaved as I should. Okay. So I haven't behaved as I should. And we'll me? execute. And there it goes. Yeah, that's directed towards you. Yep. Um, so now as it comes through. Do, 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 do. 
Always, never fails. So who's call, whoever's calling Scott? Stop it. It's it's probably my car warranty. Yep. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so once it's in there and, and it's and it's imported, I can go into that pad to edit, which is here. Exit. That should be in there. Go to pad. Exit. Pad mode. Shift. Sample. There it is. Wave edit. Okay. There we go. So this this is exactly what you were just watching with Dad. You can set a start point. You can set an end point. Now this sample is a lot longer than the part that I want to use. So I can do this really, really quickly by pulling this down. But since it's so long, uh, and I'll go ahead and zoom, see if I can zoom out so you can see. It's pretty long. But anyways, I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in the end point. So it's a lot closer. Let's see where my start point is. Shift, move. See, that shows you how big of a, a sample it is. All right, so I just want this first part. I want to bring in that start point. And once I'm done with it, same exact thing that Ed did. We'll go ahead and, and call that done. I mean, I, you can pretty much leave it there because that's all it's going to play. I haven't behaved. And that's it. And I think it's plenty loud. Um, so once it's done, I'll go ahead and bring the volume down. Bring it down. I haven't behaved. Good. I can exit. I mean, it, it's there at this point. But notice how it stops if I let go. So again, if I go back to that sampling um, edit, quick edit, I want to make sure the gate's off. So if I select the gate off, now when I hit that, that pad, I haven't behaved. it will play for the whole sample I haven't behaved. instead of having to do that, that little trick thing there. So once we've got that far with everything, you've got that sample set up. I'm just going to go to initialize scene and I'm going to show you something else. Um, if I go ahead and go into the zones menu and zone edit, uh, no, it's scene edit. What I want to do is I want to change the keys into um, a pad. So I can change whichever zone I want to basically pull all those pads down into the keys. So if I change this to, uh, just for giggles here, let's say pad two, what is that, seven, two, three, two. Okay, enter, awesome, exit. Uh, if I go into the zone view, now you'll see that, that zone two is pad. Now where this is cool is that now all of these can be triggered from the keys. So if I go out and I come into this, and again, this is really, really easy to do and, and probably one of the, the, the the typical things that you'll do if you're just triggering samples. If you're not doing multi-samples and you're not trying to trigger them across the keys, you just want to trigger that intro or trigger that special effect or that talking part or whatever, this is probably the best way to do it. And this is separate from the sampling area. So there's 2.75 gigs here just sitting in the pads that you can use for just the simple triggers. So right now, the pads are set up to work in a chromatic fashion. Pad number one is going to be C2, which is not that one. I haven't this behaved. One. So it's down here, C2. Um, so that that triggers pad one. C sharp two is, is pad two and three. So that's great. But what if we don't want it on that key? What if we don't want it to be that C. We want it to be the bottom key or another key somewhere and we only want to be able to trigger that because we have another layer going on. So what you need to do is you can go in and actually transpose the sample. Now it doesn't transpose the pitch but it does transpose the location. So what happens is is if we go into uh, menu and we go into zone edit and we come down to pitch for zone number two, we have the option to move it as transpose, coarse tune, fine tune, or octave shift. So sometimes the easiest way to do it is to work in transpose. So right now, if this is on C2, I haven't behaved. I haven't behaved. And if I move it down, you notice it's not there anymore. So it's moved down, what, 10? Or it's moved actually up. So one of the things that's interesting with the transpose is that it kind of works the opposite way. If we want it to be the last key down, and we're currently right here on the C, 
I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? I move the key eight down. But in the transpose, it's actually a positive. So if I bring it up to eight here, now it should be this key. I haven't behaved. So that's just one thing to think. If you want to go down, go positive. If you want to go up, you want to go negative. So you can plant it on a specific key. This wasn't available before in, before version 2.0. So this is a huge thing. So now I've got it on the key that I want, but I don't want anything else to trigger. So that's as simple as going back into the zone view and just changing uh, the start point and the end point. So if I bring this down and I layer it to, let's just layer it to something else so that we can see the split. I'll bring it back up. And I can even hold shift and just I haven't that behaved. Too. I haven't there behaved. There it is. So um so you can you can go in and actually just zoom in behaved. on that one key. I haven't behaved. I haven't right. behaved. Where am I? There it is. So one more is, down. I this haven't is behaved. a great tip. Yeah. yeah. So this now now I, I just have it down on that one key. And you can see it right there. Uh, and I can probably turn this off. So nothing else triggers. Nothing. I haven't behaved. But that one key. So if you had this layered with something else and needed to trigger that or wanted it to be under a key because that's when you hit it. I haven't behaved. There it is. Cool. It's just a cool thing. And that's a great tip for everybody that's going out. You, you know, once you're playing live, you're trying to trigger a specific phrase or a, a musical. An intro. Intro. Yeah. You know. I mean, there's all boom. kinds of things. Yeah, all kinds of things. So that's great. And we're going to have a video on all of this uh, soon. We're working on more content for this. Uh, so that's cool. So let's go ahead and do, we're going to do one more on the keyboard, but then we're going to go to multi-sampling. Right. Okay. So uh, let me see here. Let me see if any questions real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, as someone asked, can you chop the sample? At this time, I don't believe you can do any kind of chopping, but we're going to see if we can figure out uh, how we can do a, maybe kind of a, a different chop, like maybe resave the sample a couple of different ways and chop it that way. Or what I tend to do, I know myself and probably Scott, mm -hmm. is I'll throw in the sample if I'm going to do a lot of chopping. I'll throw it inside Logic or Ableton or whatever, and I chop it up there because I get a better visual Good representation. Chop and then I can dump them out as individual uh, samples. Yeah. Or, or you bring in the same sample several times and just, if you can see the waveform, chop it like that. So kind of like, like what that. Ed and I just did with the pad section, for instance, you could bring in that same sample and just use different points. But I am with Ed with this. I kind of like to pre-do what I'm doing, you know, pre yeah. have it already pre-set up and, uh, and then bring them in because I already know that it, it's exactly how I want. Yeah, it's in the and the Phantom does a ton of stuff, yeah. but there are certain things I'm like, oh well, I'll just it might be faster for me to do it in the computer this way, and then kind of like pre cook my sample and then throw it into into the into the Phantom. Uh, right. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do another one real quick, and then we're gonna get, move on to multi sampling. Keep the questions coming and comments coming. We love it. Keep on doing the like and all that stuff. We love all that stuff. Okay, so what next one we're gonna cover is sampling to a keyboard. Okay, so and uh, this. This is going to help a lot, um, and then we'll move over to uh, multi-sampling. So first off, like, once again, like let's press a button. Let's press it. Okay, sample to the keyboard. Obviously, this is going to be very similar. Uh, instead of to the pads, as we did before, we're going to sample to the keyboard. All right, so we get a little bit different options here. Are, am, I, am I sensing boom number two? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a... Uh, I think I think I think. Or is Dwayne it just going to go as boom boom? I think Dwayne already did my my evaluation, my employment evaluation. So this is going to be you know. So we, <laughs> Care, so, careful, Diaz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, back to the quiet room for Ed. All right, cool. So input <laughs> and mono, we're good for there. Now we get. <laughs> look, Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne just said not yet, not yet. Okay, <laughs> it's scary having Dwayne in the chat. Yeah. All right, so okay, so first off, it's saying, hey, do you, we're gonna. This came up here, destination tone. So this is saying where it can possibly go ahead and, and put this sample once we go ahead and put it as a tone. Okay. The next thing is going to be loop mode, which we can go ahead and we can tell it, do we want it to keep looping as forward or do we want it to do as a one shot or reverse, which can be very interesting. I remember Missy Elliott back in the day did a lot of uh, really cool samples in reverse during her tunes. So that's that's a really nice and a reverse one shot. So I'm gonna just gonna have this as a one shot. That's fine. Uh, okay. And then of course you guys see here we can do original key. Uh, 
if I'm doing a a, a phrase uh, or a drone or something, it, more of a phrase like Scott just did a speaking one. Uh, this might not be as important, but I, so I'm just going to keep this on C4. Now, if you're doing anything musical uh, or maybe a pitch drum, uh, maybe you might want to do that. Yeah. And this all can be edited after the fact. So if you make an error and you know it's not how you thought, you can go back into the sample edit and uh, adjust this. So the next one is going to be saved to internal uh, storage. So do I want to keep this? Okay, yeah, I might, I might want to keep it and assign the keyboard. So I can have it go automatically to the keyboard. All right, so I think we're ready. I'm, okay, so I'm going to grab this mic, my mic back again, and let's kind of have some fun and... Okay, here we go. Here we go. Do auto trigger. Everything's good. Test, 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 test. Good level. All right, let's go ahead and have some fun. Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's been nice knowing you. No, yeah. It was good. awesome working with you. <laughs> awesome working with you. All right. So, so here we can go ahead and preview. Hi, Dwayne. Okay. <laughs> So we can have a little bit of fun. So, all right. So I like that. <laughs> I like that. So we can go ahead and have some fun here. And right, you can see the sample is being brought in. And now we can do our adjustments in here, our little bit of editing in here. So we have it in here. Here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. Yeah, thanks. So, right. so in the meantime. In the meantime. We'll take a question. So Michael Michael Mallon wanted to know uh, when you override a sample on the pad, does it over does it override it completely, or or is it, you know is, is the original gone forever? Yes. So if you want to keep any of those pad samples, or you have ones that you want to keep, when you do a backup, make sure that you save the samples, uh, the sample pads. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. So menu backup and check the little box that says with samples. Okay, cool. So, yep. And so here we got modify. I'm going to go right to modify. As you see, the Phantom already determined where that uh, where that point, where that start point, and it and and it ended when I pressed stop. So I'm going to go to modify here. Of course, I want to go to emphasize, not emphasize. Uh, cancel. Truncate. I want to go to normalize first, so I can. I like to be able to see what's going on with the sample, and then mm -hmm. uh, and make sure I got it, and then I'll do the truncate after that. Uh, so I want to make sure that that entry point of the start point of the sample is good and then make sure the end point is a natural decay, you know, because I don't want it to I want it to sound natural. Oh, and look at this. You can see it should be something able to before see the start something point. before. Yeah. So let's do the preview. Let me turn down my volume just because I'm not sure. Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. We just Dwayne, have the Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne. OK, so now I'll go ahead and adjust my start point and let's do a little bit of horizontal zoom so I can really get down in there. And this really comes apparent when you're working with like a beat sample, okay? And you know, you guys can get real nice and close look. You can see even down to there and I think maybe right there. Hi Dwayne. Yeah, I think <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, I'm in so dead. All mm. right, so now we can go ahead and do the end point right here. And uh, maybe if I want to go ahead and adjust that horizontal. And as and, Scott said, I can hold down shift and kind of zoom in a little bit faster. Bit faster. Yeah. And the other thing, too, you have another line that's sitting there that has an L on it. Um, that stands for? For loop. Loop point. S yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's, we're going to have fun with this one. Okay. <laughs> um, so did. All right. So let's go ahead and we go preview and let's see what we have. Hi, Dwayne. Okay. And if you listen, that, that decay over here on the ending... Sounds natural. Let's go ahead and see if I can adjust it a little bit more in because I'm trying to save a little bit of space. Okay, look, just moved it over so I can see. Hi, Dwayne. Fine. Okay, let's do one more. Okay. All right. Hi, Dwayne. All right, cool. So now if I wanted to, I would go into modify and and, and then I'm going to uh, truncate because obviously I don't need this part or that part. So modify and we'll go into truncate and now we're going to make a nice clean cut of that sample so we don't have any of that stuff in there so all right we got that here okay cool cool cool, cool. And, and just so we just about have it okay now let's explain that loop part we had going so now we have it so right now it said as a one shot 
if I were to go to a forward, right, Scott? If I go to mm -hmm. forward, that means it's going to loop. Well, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and say, I could, I could have the loop go to here. So watch what happens. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Okay, so it just kept on looping over all the way around. But if I come in a little bit farther, this is the start point. This is the end point. Here's the loop. I can come right here, and if I'm right, Scott, this mm -hmm. is going to be great. I can. Hi, Dwayne. 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 Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne. 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 <laughs> EDM. That's, like, that's actually Dwayne, a cool rhythm. Dwayne, Dwayne, that's, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne, Dwayne. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a great okay. rhythm. So, <laughs> and you're done. All right, so this, so I think we're ready, Scott. So if mm -hmm. we wanted to, now I'm going to just keep this as a one shot. I'm trying to use the pen. <laughs> just keep it as a one shot. Do it, do it as reverse. I like to hear oh, it. Oh, let's hear, let's hear reverse. Okay, uh, let's do reverse uh, one time. Okay. Now, 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 now. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep it as a one shot. All right. I think we're ready, Scott. And let's go to modify one more time. Okay. We're good there. Utility. Okay. Let's go ahead and rename this. And real fast. And, you know, i got to keep this stuff. we got to keep it fun, you know. Yeah. So the name will be Career Ender. Career Ender <laughs> dot com. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you mean? <laughs> okay. I don't understand. I don't understand. All right, so now that that is called there, and I could go ahead and write it, Scott. And right here, it's saying where do I want to write the sample. So this is actually where the sample is going to live. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this, okay, the reason I'm showing you this is that now, if I wanted to, I'm writing the sample, which is going to be separate from the tone. The tone right. that we're creating. You have a whole sample section or a whole sample area that that mm -hmm. for storage. So this is what this is showing. Yeah. So I am saving it right there. Cool. Okay. So it saved the sample, but now let's go ahead and utility, and let's assign to the keyboard. Oh yes. So, so and does does uh, designation tone right here. You can go ahead. It's going to go assign to keyboard, and let me go ahead and pop open. See, because I already have some other stuff here. I don't want it to. I got some of the other, and hold down shift, and I'm doing the wheel, so it jumps. I have a whole bunch of tones that I've gotten from uh, from Roland Cloud, and I'm going to Yeah, put, he's also got, hi, Bob, hi, Scott, hi, Bob. hi, hi Gabe. Scott. They're all in there. They're all in there, you know. <laughs> What'd you do this weekend? Nothing. Okay, so <laughs> we'll start this one in 1001. That's where I'm going to put all my silly samples. All right, so here we go. Uh, select, that's where it's going to go. And survey says, since I put it on, look, the name of that tone is High Dwayne. So, like, Love it. It. Dwayne. oh, wait, let me go ahead. Get that, <laughs> that piano. Hi, Dwayne. 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 So, there it is. So, we can kind of have some fun with that. Hi, Dwayne. Yep, and I did mess up. Let me see if I can kill That's that a reverb. Lot of Dwayne. reverb. Yeah. Hi, Dwayne. I took off the reverb. Hi, Dwayne. 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 All right. So, so here at Career Ender Sampling. Okay. So anyway, I hope you guys kind of uh, enjoyed that one. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Let's go ahead as we can go ahead I have a in there. Oh, go ahead, Scott. Uh, when we brought that, when you brought the sample in, hi Dwayne, is there a way to go back in and change the pitch or to have it a constant pitch? Like we had that question earlier with doing drums. Oh, oh, let's go ahead and put it at a drum. Let's go okay. ahead and maybe do it that way. And see oh. if you can keep it as a constant pitch. So it doesn't matter what key you hit, it's always the same. Actually, that's a trick. I can do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's a, a kind of a fun thing. <laughs> Dwayne, Dwayne commented, Nightmares. Nightmares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, D hey, Dwayne, will you approve this? Uh, no. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> That's going to be his ringtone, by the way. Okay. Oh, Lord. All right. So if I wanted to make this where it was all the same, all the same, no matter the pitch, uh, check this out. Since we're working with the sample, I'll go into menu. I'll go into... Uh, Tone, edit, and samples can be for good and for evil. And here on the pitch right here, I can adjust. I'm going to go into the pro view if I'm right. Yeah, I'm going to go to pitch key follow. Pitch key follow is going to adjust that in there. So watch this. This is also a trick that I do with people that I don't, I don't want them playing my keyboard. I adjust the key pitch follow 
uh, to something completely different. So watch this. We're going to have some fun with this one, and we're going to put it at zero. And watch what happens. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. So it's all constant pitch. This is... This is great for the drums, right, with the yes. drum stuff. But sometimes you may want a specific sound that you want to add, like a clicking or knocking sound or something like that you want to add to the keys, but oh, you don't yeah. want it to change pitch. This, this is, again, perfect. Yeah, this has been a good way that I've done Big in the trip. past. For, for accordion patches, I'll take like a knocking kind of sound, and I'll put it where it's the key follow is at zero. And then, so it's in, it's in, it has its own tone or that particular zone. It's all zero, but then I bring in the other effect sound, maybe like a, a electric piano or accordion or something like that, okay. and we adjust. They're regular, so. And that and works on any tone. It doesn't have to be a sample. It can be anything. Uh -uh. So now let's let's go this because I know someone was asking about this earlier, and I'm not trying to ignore them. Uh, it's just so much to cover, and we're gonna mm -hmm. go to multi sampling next. Uh, let me see here, real quick. Well, I figured today, I'm just going to say, it, I figured today we're going to at least kind of cruise over it, but we'll be hitting this again at yeah. some point. So let me ask, is everybody okay? You good? We're having fun with samples. So, you know, we've already talked about, let's just recap. We've already talked about how to sample directly to a pad, you know, from you just using a microphone, how to sample directly to the keys using a mic. And I, I you know, I'm being a little bit silly, but... It's it's all the same. So if you wanted to kind of have some fun. And, and yeah, then, now, now I want to hear boom. Hi, Dwayne. Okay. Boom. I think we might be able to do that. We might be able to do that. I got to find the boom. And then, and then Scott told you a really, uh, showed you a really great way to, to go ahead and, uh, and get put, put uh, a sample in a different part of the keys from the pads. So and again, I, that's, I, I'll just hit it really fast. That's probably a lot of what some of you just need to do. You just need to trigger something. That's probably the easiest way to do it, but you can also do it the way Ed just did it. So it's up to you with what makes most the more more sense to you. Okay, so so let me see if I can cover this super quick because I, I I don't want I want definitely want to move on. Uh, we're gonna go very fast uh, to multi sampling. To, well, well, yeah. Well, let's go to multi sampling. Uh, well, here uh, let me show. Well, I tell you what, I'm gonna do. We'll we'll get a drum one. How to make a custom drum kit from samples. That's going to be its own video, just FYI, okay? So just hold tight for that one. Uh, that one just going to take a, that that takes a little bit longer because we're actually loading samples into individual keys, individual keys, and then we can actually load multiple samples, not a multi sample, but a multiple types of samples on the same key. So if you're making for instance a bass drum, it can be comprised of a lot of different bass drum samples and the internal waveforms to make that particular sound. So uh, go ahead and follow us on Roland Product Support on YouTube, and that one's going to be coming really soon because I, I think that one's a pretty cool one. But I really want to move over uh, to multi-sampling for you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and move with me to multi-sampling. So here's first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to open up Logic. I want to show you how I use multi-sampling. And the way I do it right now, say you're playing a gig and you use uh, different soft synths, uh, software instruments, okay? And But I don't want to take my MacBook to the gig with me. Well, by using the multi-sampling, you can, you can multi-sample sample that particular soft synth, and then you can bring it into the Phantom. And so let's go ahead and learn that now. So I'm going to go ahead and open up logic uh as my example and i'm going to use the phantom as my input and output device so that way you guys can hear uh okay i might do i uh because i have the phantom here let's go ahead and use it all right so check this out uh there we go i'm going to use a software instrument and i'm just going to use something in here let's go ahead and just do uh one of these guys let's do a retro synth great and I'm going to hit create. Okay, great. So now before I do that, remember the Phantom. Let me go ahead and throw throw her in here. The Phantom. There we go. The Phantom is we're going to use that one to go ahead and trigger. Okay, so we're going to have that go ahead and trigger sounds right here. Okay, so. I, 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 oh, sorry. Sorry, Dwayne. Okay, so, <laughs> that was not intentional. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, now it's cleared out. Okay, so right now when I press the keyboard, it's playing the piano sound and that synth. Because remember, now the Phantom can play the from the internal sound engine and external sound engine simultaneously. So I'm going to press and hold Shift. 
if it's green, it's only going to be triggering the external. Uh, if, if it's, can you guys see that? If it's green, it's doing external. If it is orange or yellow, it's going to be doing both. Let me, let me go ahead and make this so you guys and, can see. And it. even if it's, I think, uh, I think it's, even in this mode, if it's off, it's still yeah. triggering both. Yes, even because I had it off. So red mm -hmm. is internal, green is external, uh, yellow is both. So in this example, I'm going to do green. So now, all you're hearing now, here you go. Is logic, yeah. Is logic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, Scott? Just do a triad. Okay. I can so. hear it in stereo. I'm just so happy. It sounds Yay, awesome. Yay, stereo. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. So here's how we're going to go ahead and do a multi-sample of this. Inside Logic, inside Main Stage, uh, and I think also in GarageBand, if you go into the Audio Effects section, there is, in the section called Utility, there's something called Auto Sampler. And I believe this was bought by uh, Apple years ago, an old company, I think called Redmatica. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, go into stereo right here. Check it, Check this out. I love this. Uh, where'd you go? There it is. Look at that, Scott. Uh, let me go ahead and... Is Phantom still in, is the Phantom in the way? Let me move the Phantom. Yeah, oh. it looks like you're supposed to be part of that box. That's just kind of funny. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. All right, so here's what we're looking at, everybody. Uh, this, is, this is real cool. <laughs> Shout out to, to Yvonne. Play, with, play them triads. Hey, man. All right, so check this out. In here, this uh, this utility is saying it's going to trigger these particular notes. That's what it's going to sample. Okay, so and then we can determine when it samples, how long is it going to sample that note? So the sustain of that. We can adjust where it starts and where it ends. So I'm going to go ahead and just we're just going to do a quick one and just kind of have fun with this because I want to show you guys this. Uh, and you see the range right there. You see, so we can do all of that. And I guess I'll just keep it right here, Scott. So we'll do C to C. Uh, I tell you what, we're gonna, let's do just a couple of octaves. So because this takes, this can take a little bit of time. All right, cool. So we're gonna do it to here. We're gonna do it the sustain. We're gonna have a quick sustain. So maybe we'll do this for maybe three seconds. Okay. Now this is something that's real cool. If you have a sound that has multiple layers, you can actually choose how many layers you you want to sample. Uh, this is kind of neat, right, Scott? You're, You're talking about actually, velocity, right? The velocities, I'm yeah. sorry. Thank you. You can go into the velocities and choose how many velocities make up this this uh, this this sampling session. So I'm going to just go ahead and just do one, just for here, okay? Because uh, this is a basic kind of sound. Uh, and I think we're good. Right, Scott? I think we're good. And uh, let's see. Auto loop. So let's search with X fade. So if I hold a note, it'll just kind of keep it going. And I think we're good, Scott. Okay. Go for it. All right, here we go. Everything's good. Looks good. Okay. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to sample. All right, hold on, everybody. Won't take long. Couple seconds. Here we go. Survey says sample. Here it comes. Oh, just because it's saying, hey, where do you want to do it? All right, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, where I want to put it, and let's go, let's just call it synth sample uh, test. Okay, great. Okay, add some, it's, own, its own folder in the sampled instruments in my audio music apps. Sampled instruments, auto sampled. Okay, great. I think we're good. All right, here we go. So much fun. That, that was almost something. Else. Hold on, everybody. Did everybody make it? All right, cool. So, so basically what this software did, I mean, you can do it on your own too. Yeah, you can Same do it on your own. Thing. But what I love is the software is so precise. Yeah. So let me go ahead and I'm going to let me go ahead and find that real quick. Let me make sure I got that. Okay, great. Now, here we go. Here we go. So check this out. So here we go into my audio uh, music apps. And uh, let me see where I'm at. All right, great. Now, here it is, the auto 
sampled, right? There it is. And if I go to it, look at there. But look at right here. Sampled instruments. There's the sample instruments. And it's a dot, uh, what is it, a dot .exs file. Well, we can't load that in. But if you look down, samples auto, from the auto sampled session, and there they all are. Okay. Can you, can you zoom in at all? I'm just curious. Uh, I don't think I can zoom in. Okay. I can't zoom in, no but problem. we're we're going to get we're going to get into it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my thumb drive of my Phantom, and I'm going to plug it into the computer real quick. So hold on one second. Okay, so I got the Phantom uh, plugged in the thumb drive, and I'm going to open up another window so you guys can see. Here we go. Okay. Here's the window. All right. So there's the window for everybody. So now, Scott, what do you think? Where, where should I put the samples? Because I'm going to actually take all of these samples. And I don't know if you guys can see, but each one, of the, and we'll see it in the Phantom, but all of these samples have the actual note uh, number where they're, where they, uh, what they are. So where should I put it in here, Scott? I well, according to uh, Joshua, who's been awesome on the thing, is you probably want to bring them into storage. That seems to be what he's doing with everything. And these are great tips. He puts everything into storage. That way, if something gets screwed up or he accidentally deletes something, he can still go back and find it. Yep. And so here, I was moving some that I did. I, I might go ahead and we can see what's in here. We get this different sound and phantom, my backups, which I don't have right now. Uh, let's. I might go you, see. So I should probably make a, make make a folder. You think? Uh, possibly. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't gotten I haven't tried it this way yet. Yeah. So well, the I'm cool going thing with is, your is, lead is the phantom phantom just tells you, hey, uh, you know, uh, we can use the sample utility and find, find it. So I believe that's mm -hmm. right. So, OK, I got that in there. I have that in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab all these guys and throw them into the phantom thumb drive. It didn't take long. Great. And now we're going to take it out. And now we're going to bring it into the Phantom. All right, hold on one second. Great. And, okay, place your bets. Can I plug in the thumb drive the first try? Oh, where is it? Without looking. Oh, that's strike one. Oh. <laughs> nope. Thanks, Dwayne. Okay, Dwayne just said no in the background. That's so rude. Like I ever do anything to Dwayne. Okay, so, so anyway. All right, so let's have some fun. Now we have the thumb drive plugged into the Phantom. All right, so let's go ahead and do it, Scott. Let's go into the Phantom. Let me just go into a new tone just to kind of we're, we're good. Okay, so I guess we would have to go. Where do you think we'd have to go? Well, Probably. first thing is, yeah, you got to get it in into the keyboard. So do you think so? Let's. I let's think go, so. Let's go ahead and see first. So we're going to press sampling right away. And probably here to multi-sampling. So we're not sampling. We're actually importing. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens to multi-sample. Great. So now we are actually looking inside, inside the USB memory. Okay, so uh, there we go. And look, there's the folder. There's the folder right there. And here's all of those. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice is that they say C1, C2, C3. It says F sharp one. It, it tells you what the name of those samples are. So that should be pretty pretty cool. So let's see here, Scott. I'll bring these guys in here. I'll say, you know what? Shift and use my cursor. And I can go ahead and just grab them. Shift. Oops. Did I mess it up already? Let me start again. Shift and cursor down and I just highlighted all of those samples great so now I just press import okay great uh, let's see what do we want to do here Scott maybe we should do like a one shot or should we maybe we'll try a loop we'll do it where it loops you know and we mm -hmm. can adjust that loop point let's see if what let's see what happens what do you think here we sure. go Let's do it. Survey says. Start good. pushing buttons. Start pushing buttons. And then I'm going to rename this multi-sample name because I know it's going to be a multi-sample uh, synth sample test. Okay, great. I think that's right. Uh, I don't want to create a tone yet. Uh, let's see here. Apply normalization. Oh, save to internal storage. Probably want to do that. Okay, great. And here we go. Execute. Okay, here we go, everybody. Survey says, boom, execute, and import samples to multi-sample. Yes, I am sure. 
Okay, so now it's going. So it's importing, and then we're going to take a look at these samples, and we're going to actually go in here and tell them where they live. Okay, while that's doing that, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. No, to, to <laughs> Roland and Boss. To Roland and Boss, you guys make sure and you go check out the different Roland channels uh, on yeah. YouTube, on Facebook. I know we got a lot, a lot of stuff planned for you in the future, so just uh, make sure you check out our boss. We do a boss uh, kind of talk with our guys Aaron Marino and some of his crew on the boss mm -hmm. side, and awesome then also. Stuff. Check us out there. Also, make sure you go and check out RolandCloud.com, www.RolandCloud.com. We have a lot a lot of cool stuff happening there. Uh, we just released Xenology Pro, mm -hmm. and that is a great way you can go ahead and edit all of your just Zen, Zen Core type of sounds, Zen Core sounds that live in the Phantom, the Jupiter X, the Jupiter the X X Edge. X Edge. What else? Uh, the MC 707 101 101 RD88. So mm -hmm. go, go check out Roland Cloud. Okay. And also, oh. don't forget, don't forget that we came out with new things. So you've got Zen Xenology Pro, which is now available at Roland Cloud. Um, you've got the TR6S, which is a smaller version of the TR8S uh, drum machine sampler. You've got the um, the TR06, which is a boutique version of the 606 drum machine with some added features. What else? I mean, we've had some. Oh, the wireless MIDI. Wireless MIDI. The yeah. UM1. Uh, yeah, the U1, UM1 and the UM1D for computer MIDI. Yeah, so a bunch of stuff to check out for sure. Okay, so I had an error on the first try, so I'll do it in again. It, it's almost there, and we'll see what I did wrong. So Try one shot. Yeah. Well, well, I don't think that's it. It might have been saving to the initial storage. We'll see what happens at this time in there and you know uh it could be a lot of things but we're going to do it again that's that's a great well that's the great thing about going live we're going to try a bunch of different stuff kind of have fun with it and see yeah. what we have going uh and these are the same kind of issues you might run into so uh sometimes it's user error sometimes it's not so we're going to just take a look right there uh so but it's it's pretty cool that the phantom can do this where uh you know we've never been able to do that before okay hold on one second almost there Shout going, out to XP50 player. Going, he said going, Zen Beats 2.0. Awesome. That's it. Awesome. That's the other one. Yep. That's Thank you. One. Okay. So a sample error. So I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go to multi sample, but this time I, uh, let's see, internal storage. I'm going to say, okay, let's do it one more time. I'm going to import, but I'm going to say not to save it to the internal storage at this time. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's execute. You guys ever do stuff when you're practicing and it totally works and then you do it later in front of people and it doesn't work? You're like, come on. Oh, that was how this whole thing be began for me today. Yeah, with your camera. Scott, <laughs> yeah. got, a new, Scott got a new camera and, and uh, he didn't RTFM. No, <laughs> no. anyway, we're getting it going. All right, so we'll get this going. Because I was already doing this the other night with some different samples options in here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Douglas Carmichael, he just mm -hmm. asked, uh, can samples created on the Phantom or Xenology Pro be exported to the 707? And I don't think so at this time. They can be sampled in, but it, it's like the compatibility that's going on is, is the Zencore engine. So Zencore Pro yeah. sounds can move around to everything. Or you could write one on the Phantom as long as it's in the Zencore engine and move it to the MC. But the samples you would have you would have to resample it. Well, I don't uh, I don't think it. Zencore samples per se. I don't think it samples. No, 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 it, it, no, it doesn't. No. Yeah, so, that, that's it, so that's the first thing. So right. so uh, yeah, so samples created on a Phantom, you you you'd probably have to recreate them inside the 707 or send them to the 707. But the way they're laid out is a little bit different in the architecture. Okay, and it so. depends on how they're coming in because once the Phantom has a hold of it, it's going to label it and format it as a different file type. When it's coming in, it may just be a WAV file. Yep. You know, and it, that same WAV file obviously could go into the MC. Yeah, and it should read WAV dot WAV and uh, slash AIFF and we are good here. So now, so we have it in here. I haven't saved it into the internal memory yet. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start. I have the loop mode, but look, here's what we're going to change first off is the original key. Okay. And so I can go ahead and get these samples. Uh, let's see here. Oh, did I, okay. I can go into wave edit. We can kind of see. So wave edit this particular one. Let's go ahead and see. 
I shouldn't have named it that yet, Scott, because now I can't see what it is. Let me see. Uh, sample disease test. All right, let's figure yeah, but this. Th th this is good. This is good to, that it's happening here and not mm -hmm. when we're doing this on the side because other people see it and won't make the same mistake. So well, it's a what, good thing. What I will do is I will cheat real quick because I can see the actual files on the computer and I will just make sure that they probably came in the same exact way. So this first one should be C1. Let's go ahead and give it a quick preview. Let me watch my volume. Oh, no, that's not C1. No, it's like C5 or 6. So that's F sharp. So we can go mm -hmm. here. So F sharp, that's probably an F sharp. Here we go. Original key. You can either scroll or press enter. And let's see. Let's say it's F sharp 4. That's fine. Okay, great. And let's go to this one. Let's preview. Okay, oh, this one's see, probably. Let's move this one to see what happens real fast. Oh, hold on. And uh, let me go ahead and shut logic because that's probably what I'm hearing also. Shut down logic so that way I'm not, I don't have anything. Okay. Okay, great. Here we go. Now, that's that. That's that one. That sounded exactly the same. Yeah, it's the same sample. That's the same sample. Okay, let's go down a little bit more. Uh, let's see here. Unless, let's, let me make some adjustments. Let me see what's going on. Can we? That's so funny. It just came in like that. Let me see here. I tell you what, I am going to try. Here, Scott, why don't you uh, answer a couple questions? And I, well, let's keep this on the sure. screen. Sure, I'll, I'll answer a quick question. Um, so uh, I think it's... Can't quite read the name from here. I apologize for the eyes, but it was the question is Will the Phantom ever be able to stream from an external hard drive? Now, this is something that we've definitely had a lot of questions with, even, even ourselves. We don't know at this time if that's going to be possible, but it is definitely something that's been requested. It is definitely something that we have been talking about. So uh, it's it's on the table. Uh, we'll see where it goes from there, but definitely keep keep an eye on on newer updates. Trying to think of what else we got here. We got Douglas Michael, uh, Carmichael. We answered that. Um, I think that's pretty much that. I mean, this is this is the the beauty with live again is just kind of going through it and learning it. You know, you do it once, everything looks perfect, and you go back to do it again. You can't figure out what's going on. So that's kind of what will happen here and there. And I personally think it's a cool thing because yep. it it brings it back to reality and not this perfect polished little thing, um, which is has its own place and is great but the live i kind of like that so where yeah. you at ed uh, i'm gonna probably just uh i'm gonna reload i'm gonna reload the stuff and i'm gonna probably go ahead see because what i probably did wrong is when i named it that it just threw out all the information that i needed in here so that's something good to good to kind of know so when it comes in, it comes in with that first part of the file name, right? So that that's first how part it's of the file it. name, and so that's why I'm, it's not putting it in a certain way. So I'm going to put it back in my computer real quick. Hold on. Oh, you know what it did? Hmm. It took it took all of those and it put them in that folder. And it right. named it that. So it has that folder extension first. It had the folder extension first. So I'm going to... Is that you? I'm That's sorry. me. I'm hearing scary music. <laughs> okay, so okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these guys out of that folder for right now. Uh, oh, you see, you see there? Can you guys... Okay, I switched it. In there, it says synth sample leads, and it took all of that stuff in there. So, but I want, I want all this stuff. I want, I gotta see that stuff. Uh, there we go, the C1. So I might come into here and say, all right, uh, synth, and I'll copy that little part, and I'll do the same for the rest of them really fast. Whoops. Got a quick question from Douglas Carmichael again saying, can you fire off long audio tracks from the Phantom? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you, you could set up the sample pads uh, as backing tracks. This could be four or five minute songs or, or whatever you want. So, yes. Um, as far as the multi-sample, I think we said it was, what, two minutes and 44 seconds or something? Something, something like that, yeah. 
So, so you'd be limited in that time. But the, the sample pads can be, yeah, they can be long. Yeah. So right now I'm just, yeah, so it was a naming issue on my part. We learned that if you go in there and you put some uh, crazy name on those samples, uh, that could be the that could be the problem. Yeah, makes it crazy. But it, it, this is this is how we learn, right? Yep. So I I wonder if it was because because you see you see the name of the folder is synth samples test, and so when I dropped them in that folder, it renamed everything that, but it kept it kept uh, the note numbers kept all that note information so I know where it lives on there so not a big deal we'll just go ahead and fix it and this is some oh, was that just is that you <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Ta-da>! yeah. <laughs> figured it out okay cool so so this is going to be our homework this weekend boys and girls you know mm-hmm. we gotta we'll do some, some and I'm uh, sure we're going to do a lot more with this and and with other creative ways that you guys are sampling or bring to us or more right, that cool. we experiment with so it's going to be an ongoing thing. I can totally tell. Okay, so now we should be, now we should be good. Okay, first time non-believers, first try into there. Okay, not looking, just feel. Yes, first time. Take that, Dwayne. All right, cool. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and turn off my Phantom, rather than just trying to get everything redone. I'll just turn it off. That's the that, you know that's the keyboard player way too. Just turn it off. Just turn. Yeah, if it's doing something just, weird, just turn it off. But it's not the. Fa- it wasn't the Phantom on that one. It was me. It was <laughs> it the was, Ed. It was the Ed. I don't. I don't like that attitude. <laughs> Okay, so right now my phantom's turning on, which we'll go ahead and mention. This. I'm not really concerned about that because the phantom powers on in under a minute, so that's mm-hmm. that's great. Where other keyboards take a couple of minutes, and ours does not. Denied. So yeah, you can actually make coffee, get a cup of coffee, come back, wait for it to finish loading. Not the phantom. Yeah, we're not mentioning any names, but they're out there. All right, so cool. Mm-hmm. My phantom's pretty much loaded up now, getting up there. Hallelujah. All right, <laughs> go ahead. so. Oh. Okay, so we get the Phantom in here, let it do its little load process, and then we're going to go back and it let it do that. And then we're going to go back to the sampling process one more time and see if I can do it. All right. And, cool. and see if I can do it. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. You, you can, can do it, man. Do it. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. So I'm going to press the sampling button again right here, and I'm going to go to multi-sampling. And that's the folder, and that's where I messed up by naming that folder Sample Synth Test. And I think there's actually a folder that Roland says to put it in there, and of course, I did not listen. Good. Now, look, all my samples actually look where I can see what they're named. So now, imagine that. Okay, great. And let's go ahead and import. Great. Uh, I'm, I still want to try these as forward, so that way we can see. Uh, they can be named, oh, we'll just call it synth. You know what? I can do that later. <laughs> I can do that later. And then I don't want to do them in a tone right now, and I don't want to save to the internal storage yet. So here we go, everybody. Boom. Let's see if we can get it. All right. Great. All right. So now it should work, Scott. And that way I can go ahead and throw the throw everything in here onto the correct keys because now we know what those note numbers are. Mm-hmm. All right. So... Uh, See, Enzo says, just don't set the cup of coffee on the Phantom like it's an organ. No, don't do that. No. Don't do that. Okay, cool. A little music. A little music Scott. in between, yeah, is what I'm kind of thinking. Here, Scott, there's another question if you can grab that between your orchestra. Yeah, absolutely. Also. Okay, what do we got? Uh, there's an MP3 or a wave player in the Phantom. Is there an MP3 or wave player? I believe that uh, sample pads will see either one. If you're going to use it for samples like uh, multi-sampling and things, make sure it's at least 48 kilohertz um, is your best bet. It will see other things. It will see WAV files. But that seems to be... I, I wouldn't want to, to to bring in an MP3 or even attempt to use it as a sample. Uh, it's just too compressed and everything. And I don't even know if it's going to see it. I, uh, so. I know that Roland's gone back and forth sometimes with the MP3s, but definitely it's always been WAV and AIFF for sure. So I would try that. Um, and what was the other part of it? Uh, it means MP3 or wave player from USB. Um, no, it would have to be sampled in. It's not streaming from the USB stick, uh, like as just a playback for backing tracks. You'd have to bring them in. 
Now you do have the audio inputs that you can always use. So if you had a phone or uh, even audio from the computer, you could be running. Now the audio from the computer would run USB and it would stream through, but from a USB stick, no. Uh, other options, like I said, the audio input. So if you wanted to connect something to that, I mean, even another keyboard, you could do that and bring it through. So everything went out the main phantom outputs. Okay, so thank you, Scott. So while mm -hmm. Scott was explaining that, I am able to go in here and put everything where it's supposed to be. So let me show you what I started doing. So now that I can see that those note numbers, uh, those notes spaces, uh, what are we called? Note numbers? Uh, yeah, note number are in the sample, I can go ahead and match it to the original key. So that way when I throw them into the key bed, let me take this off, they're gonna match up. So on this particular one, it says F, uh, F sharp two. So I'll go ahead and press enter, pop it open, and I'll go ahead and say that it says F sharp two. Uh, there we go, and we'll do a couple more real quick. F sharp three, there we go, and F sharp four, Oops, right there. Wait, there we go. Oh, and this one I did it wrong because I, I misspelled the thing because I couldn't see. And with that one, C1. So we'll put it on here. Okay, great. Too far. C1. Yeah, I'm getting tired of this getting old thing with the eyes. Oh, uh, okay. So, so here, <laughs> here we can go. Okay, I think we're good. We have it all there. Let's say, do we? Uh, let's go ahead. We can go to wave modify later if we need to, but I'm going to go next. Let's see what happens. Next. Okay, so now let me go ahead and bring it the Phantom. So now we should be all set. And I turned off that first one. And look, we just sampled. So as you see, it's actually triggering those particular samples. And then, yeah, if, if you had different velocities or whatever, then those would be other samples that would be in it. But, I mean, you can see how quick this was. That's really cool. It was quick until I tried to do it. So, <laughs> so, so, here's, so here's kind of the fun thing. So, so this sample, it's that multi-sample, this particular sample is stretching to here and then for here to there. The next one, oh, yeah. Next one, and there to there. So... And so, as you guys know, the closer that the samples are, the the more the better resolution you get out of the sound. But I mean, you can sometimes just do an octave from C to C, and then the next C, and it fills in the gaps in the between. But obviously, closer you get, the better resolution. Yep, and you can see I can come in here and kind of have some fun with it. And I I did that loop, and remember when we were sampling, we told loop. Let's see if it if it. So look, we only sampled. A little bit, and it's oh, it say, stops oh, right. No, well, if you look, it stops, but then, it, but then it restarts. So that tells me if we wanted to, because because you see, there's some dead space in here. I yeah. could I could come in to the uh, do some editing and utility set the loop point. Yeah, because set, set the uh, loop point. Yeah, that's that's the way you'd have to do it if you're gonna if you're gonna hold it longer than whatever that is three seconds or something. Yeah. So if I if I wanted to, I can come into here and do the loop point in here. Which let me see. Uh, there it is. So yeah, we can come into here and do that. Go into there. Oop, let me go back to zoom. Yeah. So I would just have to go in there and set the loop point, which I probably should have done. Let me go ahead and go back. There we go. Yeah, because you want to be able to see the the wave uh, waveform too, if you can, and Oops. then set it from there so that you can match up the the correct waveform. Yeah, so it's it should be there. Of course, I backed up too much, and the cool thing is, if I wanted to save all of that, I could go back. Uh, let's go into zone edit. There it is. There it is. The zone, the multi sample. If I wanted to save it, I can then go in here and save it as a tone. Okay, and that tone is based off of that multi sample. So I can come into here and I can call it, you know, sampled whatever. So uh, do it right here. And there we go, synth. And let's go sample. And then I can go OK. And then I already have something there. So once again, uh, sounds that I've downloaded from Roland Cloud. I don't want those gone. I will put this in the thousand section for me. So I'll keep all my samples there. And. 
and we can go in here. Uh, let's see. Now, here's something that's real cool. Now, this is just one part of it. Uh, I'm going to take, after I save this particular tone, let's take a quick peek inside to this tone. All right, so it's saved. All right, now check this out. If I were to go into here, Tone Edit, and we go into Oscillator Type, Partial 1 is a PCM, and that PCM is the multi-sample. So if we wanted to, if there was another multi-samples, we, in that wave group, we could have mm -hmm. other multi-samples loaded. And this particular tone can have up to three more partials. So if I wanted to, I could say, you know what, let's turn that one on. And I can say, oh, let's load up a different multi-sample. Or let's go in here. I press Enter, pop it open. Let me get rid of this. I can choose the waves from my internal sound engine, from all my EXZs, my EXZs maybe those direct samples so if I wanted to put the, the Dwayne or whatever I want I could put that in there or another multi sample so we can we can get really nice and detailed on there okay so I uh, just wanted to show you that and, and the other thing too th this is a question that keeps coming up uh, it's about where to set the velocity levels um, which would be most likely in the the parameter editing for each multi sample. So if you had several multi samples that were sitting on the same key, you know, different thing, where do you set the the, the velocity level? Like there's a, a fade in for fading different sounds across the keyboard, but then there should be it should be in the parameter so let's uh, go, section. Let's take a look at that real fast. So in this particular tone, so I uh this let's go into zone, there it is. If I want to, I can go menu, tone edit. And since I am right here, that's the one I'm going to play with. Mm -hmm. I can come into here, go into utility, and I can either initialize that tone, initialize that pop copy, or multi-sample edit. So here's where I can get in here and really start doing some editing with those velocity uh, ranges right here. So if I, we wanted to get in here, I could go edit. And look, now we can go back into here and start doing some editing on here. So... Uh, on here if we wanted to we can go ahead and start adjusting all of that and we can see see we see all the offsets and that's that's the pitch offsets and stuff like that per key but we can also come into here and maybe move stuff around also we can maybe stretch stuff around if we want to uh, however we want and let's see if I wanted to I think you know I wonder if I should have gone into there Scott and oh here we go duh right there so what I did right there is I went into the manager right there, and here's where I started doing all of the different uh, edits. So I can just choose on a portion of the sample, and I already messed this one up because I'm just messing around. But we can go into the wave edit here, Scott, and look, that's where we can come in here and start adjusting our different uh, fine tuning. Look, see our levels. Mm -hmm. We can adjust the gain. So here's where we can go in there and edit the samples that live within that multi sample. So real quick, I'll go do it real fast yeah. again. Go yeah, ahead. as I say that that screen that la not the last screen, but the screen before the last screen. Uh, you you saw a level amount from one to one twenty seven. Cool. Let's do this together real fast. Okay. So. Uh, I just chose the zone view just so I could see the one. Mm -hmm. And I went to menu, tone edit, mm -hmm. and I went to oscillator parameter. Yep. And that's multi sample. Utility, multi sample edit. And this is a nice There it one. is right there. Yep. But then if I wanted to go nice and deep, how some of you guys want to go in there and do some stuff. And look, I could add, add different uh, stuff right through here. I could keep on adding to that tone in the multi sample view. Now I can go into edit. Right here, we can kind of see how that multi-sample is made. And I already messed it up. I could, I could probably just redo it. And then manager, and then we can get in here and see the individuals, and we can see the levels of those individual okay. notes. I think this was everybody's been asking. And, um, and that's I think it's back on the first screen where it shows that it's four blocks. So it's showing four different, um, we'll go back basically, partials. Right. Yeah. So you're looking Those at the, the partials. partials there and the on and off on buttons on the bottom or if you had all of those stacked up. Yeah, if I had them stacked. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let me go. So ahead. that's kind of your it, that's that's a little bit of your velocity. That's that's a lot of your editing right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's some of it right there. But then uh, he, since he's talking about drums and, and this is going to have to be a, another whole video. Cause oh, yeah. This 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 question was about velocity. How do I set the yeah. different velocity levels per? Per, per sample, mm -hmm. I think this is it. So f once we get here, go into edit, 
and then you can see all the individual samples. You can choose one, mm -hmm. hit manager, yeah. and then you can see all of them. And then once you choose one, you can go into wave edit, right. wave edit, and or or right here you can do gain mm -hmm. or level. And, and and again, that first screen that shows those four blocks, that's that's pretty much the velocity levels right there. Yeah. That's the ve velocity levels between the partials, right? If that's what he's asking, mm -hmm. between the partials. But if you want to go down and deep into it, that's you can go into. Uh, the, once you're in this one with multi sample edit, we can go into manager, right. and then we can start doing Getting, the, fine tuning it even more. Yeah, yeah. because the, the thing is, usually when you're you're doing a multi sample like that, and you want the velocity levers le, le, levels to be different, you if you hit it soft, it's this sample. If you hit it a little bit harder, it's that sample, and, and really hard, it's this sample. Um, that's where it would be. I mean, the other ways to do it is actually in the parameter edits and play with the fade in, the cross fading between sounds and different velocity levels there as well. Because you may want to have a completely different sound to where you hit it hard, it's a you know, a, a timpani strike or something. But when it's soft, it's not. So yeah. and, it's and playing the game between all of it. Yeah, and you just take your time. And then like I said, if you wanted to, you can go down into the wave edit. Mm -hmm. And you remember how we were holding, holding down and then it stopped. Yep. Stop right there. We could go ahead and adjust. Uh, we could go ahead and adjust that loop point, right here, that end see. point. Yeah. Well, here's that loop point. We can adjust that end point and that loop point. So we can say, all right, maybe I don't want an end point. And so it's just gonna it's gonna loop back here. Let's just see what happens. Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm you gonna, can zoom in on that so you can really see it. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let me zoom out on the horizontal. Yeah, so. Uh, this, so now this particular one that I'm previewing, it should just be constant because we set the loop mode on forward, and it's and it's since it's no end, and it's loop. It just keeps looping to here. You can hear a click, but yeah, that's where okay, you start you, to fine tune it. Yeah, then you can go into the fine tuning, but mm -hmm. we just threw that in there. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up, boys and girls, friends and neighbors. Uh, what it was is awesome. That? Yeah, some let's cool go have stuff. some fun. Well, anyway, so this today we just went over sampling, sampling, sampling. So as you can see, when you look at the Phantom, you got a lot of options here. You have sample to pad, sample to keyboard, sample to storage, you know, import to pad. Import. You get a lot of fun options in there. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage and, and you to take your time. different ways to do the same thing or different ways. So definitely, you know, think ahead of what you want to do, what the end game is, and then start to go after it that way. Yeah, so just take your time in there. So anyway, I think hmm. this is it for now. We're about over an hour and a half in, an hour and 40 Two in. Minutes, yeah, yeah for in, that's pretty good. And so uh, just take your time. Everybody just keep on helping each other on Facebook Absolutely. and the YouTubes. Mm -hmm. We'll keep watching too and producing more content for you because I know this sampling thing, I know for us it's hard to go over sampling because of copyright. We got to be real careful. We got to be mm -hmm. real careful with copyright. But you don't. Okay, so just kind of have. <laughs> but you don't. But you don't. Okay, <laughs> so just kind of have fun with that. Take your time, watch this video, but also make sure you go to Roland Product Support on mm -hmm. YouTube and subscribe. Hit like the channel and hit the bell notification so that way when myself, Scott, or any of our team from Boss or any of anybody else from Roland uh, Product Family put some new content, you will be notified so you can get in there. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go. Just remind you, everybody, be nice, wear your mask, be good people to each other. And this is Ed Diaz and Scott Berry. Thanks so much, guys. Have Take a great care. weekend. We'll talk to you later. Right. Bye.